okay so what we're gonna do is select the goblin in our hierarchy panel and then press F that will center him in the scene view and what it also does is make sure that when we create a new game object it puts it in the exact same position okay so we're gonna go to game object create other and create another cube now the key to this is that this cube is going to be an area above the goblin and if we run into this first we're gonna set that stomped variable so that he gets squished okay so we can actually take the mesh renderer off this cube make sure this is also a trigger and then we can click and drag it onto our goblin okay now if we select the goblin guy we can see both boxes so the cube box actually sits above the other um, box so this bigger box on the bottom is the one that kills us the smaller box on top is the goblin squishing box actually let's go ahead and just name it that so we know what it is goblin squishy box okay so we've got our goblin and we've got our goblin squishy box so how do we get the squishy box to tell the goblin that it's been squished well we're gonna do that through a separate script so in our scripts folder we can right click on scripts create and a JavaScript and we're gonna call this one uh, stomp okay and then we can go ahead and open that in mono develops so what we're not gonna need is the function update or the function start you get rid of those we are gonna use that function on trigger enter again so let's type that out on trigger enter other and that is also a collider and then we need to check if it's the player so we say if other dot tag double equals the word player with a capital P okay so the player has now landed inside the squishy box the goblin squishy box has been entered by the player so what we need to do is reference the other or the I'm sorry the goblin dude and tell him our goblin that he needs to change this stomp to checked so it is true okay well unity has a really nice way of doing that because the goblin squishy box is a child object of the goblin we can actually use something called transform dot root and what this does is it sends a message from any game object all the way up to its top level object okay and the goblin is its top level object as we can see here so inside that root game object we need to access the script to do that we say root dot game object dot get component if I could type today and then we are going to call that enemy script enemy so we just type that in enemy and then we need to tell it that that dot stomp variable is true okay so that's it for our goblin squishy box that's all we need to do for it so we can actually go back take our goblin squishy box and drag the stomp onto it so if we play the game now and we jump on it he doesn't do anything okay so even though we're running into our cube here in the game it's not doing anything at all so why that is is because we are registering that stomped is checked if we uncheck it here and I come back to the player in the game window actually let me highlight the goblin and I run into him now he respawns me but as soon as I jump on him you'll see that stomped get checked so now that an enemy is dead but he doesn't look dead so let's go ahead and add some effects to make it look like our enemy is dead to do that oops, sorry to do that we need to go back into the enemy script in our mono develop here okay and this is where that fall variable and that stomped are gonna come into play okay so in the update function which we left for a reason we're gonna say if we've been stomped we wanna do some stuff 
the first thing we want to do is move the player out of the or move the enemy out of the way. I'm just going to move this over. So right now in our sandwich, our enemy lines up with our player. We want to move him back so he's out of the player's way. Okay? So to do that, what we're going to do is go ahead and say transform dot position dot z is equal to 4. Okay, so that'll move it back behind the enemy. Then what we want to do is go ahead and squish him, like actually give him the squishy effect. So to do that, we're going to say transform dot local scale dot y, that's his vertical scale, and we are going to divide that by 2. Okay, so what this, what this uh, slash equals means is that we're going to take whatever's on the left and divide it by whatever's on the right. Two. Okay? Once we've done that, we can turn the stomp off. Okay? We don't need to be stomped anymore because we've been stomped. The player can't run into us. We're out of the way. But what we want to do now is get that player off the screen. Okay, we want to get rid of him. So if I save this script now, and I'll, I'll just demonstrate what I mean. If I play the game, and you watch in the game window, when I jump on him, he gets squished in half. So now what we need him to do is just go away, because right now he's just kind of floating there. But you can see it up here in the scene window, in our sandwich, he's behind the player, and he's not bothering us anymore. Okay, so what we need to do is make him fall, and that's where our fall variable comes into play. So we're going to say here that fall equals true. Well, we need to use that for something. So we're going to say if fall, what we want to do is move the player's position down so he falls off the map. Okay, so we're going to say transform dot position dot y because we're moving him down, and we're going to say minus equals zero point zero five. And I'm just putting this number in here because it's a good speed. You can change this if you want them to fall off the map faster, just increase it. Um, if you want them to fall off slower, you can change it down to say 0 0.01 or, um, or whatever. Well, he's going to keep falling and falling and falling forever because the death box won't detect his collision because he doesn't have a collider. It's a trigger. So to do that, what we're going to do is put in one more if statement. We're going to say if the transform dot position dot y of our game of our enemy is less than negative twenty five then we want to go ahead and destroy him we're going to say destroy game object with the lowercase g now if you're wondering where I got this negative twenty five in the unity game window here let me just zoom out so I can see it the death zone down here sits at um, on the y negative 25. It's actually closer to negative 26, but it's it's close enough. Okay. And the reason we're waiting until he's all the way down there is because when this happens, he's just going to disappear off the screen. Okay. We don't want that to happen when he's on the map because that just it doesn't look very good in the game. We want it to happen uh, off the screen where the player can't see it. Okay. And this part down here in the on trigger enter, the if not stomped, when we stomp the player, it won't destroy the game player anymore. That's why we put this if not stomped. So this stuff up here is if we do jump on the player. This stuff down here is for when we don't jump on the player. Okay? This stuff is for the squishy box. This stuff is for the death box. Okay? So on our goblin guy, so if we play our game now and uh, you see me run over and jump on him. He gets squished in half, but he does not go down. Hang on a second, let me look at the script. Cut him in scale in half, stomp, oh! We need to... Oh, fall equals true. And if we're falling, then we need to do that. Um, not sure, let's... Um, let's cut that out with control X and put it above the stomp and see if that makes a difference. Okay, let's try it now. Yep, and there he goes. Okay, so you're going to need to make sure that he is falling before you turn the stomp off. Okay.
Okay. Um, and so that's basically our enemy with the stomp or without the stomp. If you don't want the enemy to be stomped, let's say you want him to be invincible, you just take this goblin squishy box here and you just uncheck it. And now whenever I run into him, he is invincible. He will always respawn me. Okay. But if we leave that on, and like the Goombas in Mario, we run into him head on, or he catches up with us and we run into him, we respawn. But if we jump on him, he gets squished and he falls off the game map and dies. So the next thing we need to worry about is that our enemy right now is pretty dumb. He's just sitting there. He's the dumbest enemy in video game history. Actually, I shouldn't say that's the dumbest because I've, I've been killed by quite a few enemies in video games that are just sitting there. Um, what we need to do is move him. And we already have a script for that. Our platform mover we made in a previous video tutorial will actually work just fine. We can just click and drag that onto our enemy, and then if we want him to move horizontally, we just leave the vertical unchecked, we change the maximum amount to, um, how far do we want him to go? Let's say 10. No, let's make it 5. And then we're going to change his step speed to, uh, let's say, 0.5. Okay? Now if we play the game, you'll see him start moving back and forth. Wow, that's fast. Okay, uh, let's change that to 0.1 and slow him down a wee bit. Okay, that's a bit quicker. And now if we run into him, he forces us to respawn, but if we jump on him, he wiggles his way all the way down to death. Okay? So that's enemies, um, if you wanted to, say, make a flying enemy. Okay? You can actually set it so that enemies jump up and down, like those big stone things that used to crush Mario in the, in the Koopa levels. You can set those up just by turning on the vertical here and then making sure that their distance to the ground is a little less. Let me adjust my scene window here. So this guy is now going to move up and down and try to crush Mario. Or, well, Pellet Boy or whatever. Okay, so apparently we need to put him... Oh, yeah, that's right. Vertical goes up. So we put him on the ground first and then he moves up and down and tries to kill us. And... If we run underneath him, oh, yep, there it is. Okay, so the reason that that's happening is because our cube is just too tall. So we can actually take our squishy box and size it down on the Y and then move it up here. Okay, and now if we play with our flying goblin, he will force us to respawn when we run under him. But if we do manage to time it right, oh, we can jump on him and he doesn't fall. Why not? He's stumped. He should fall. Oh, the platform mover is taking over. So let's turn off the platform mover when we get stomped. Okay. To do that, we are going to say um, game object with a lowercase g dot get component. Uh, what's it called? Platform mover. I think that's what it's called. Platform mover dot active equals false. Okay. And just like before, we need to go ahead and cut this out. Uh, so we can just control X that, put it above the stomp, and control V. And then save. Go on back to our game window. Make sure that it compiles. And now, when we run into him, or when we jump on him, he just disappeared. Okay, well let's uh, let's just go with not doing that then. Oh, that's what we need to do. Not turn it uh, active. We need to say step equals zero. Okay. So that way it will it won't turn off the platform mover, but it'll change the step amount to zero so that it stops wiggling him and that should do it okay that's where I messed up sorry about that and now he falls like he should there it is okay and then it also works the same for vert uh, well, horizontal movements um, he'll wiggle back and forth and when we jump on him he will now fall in the position we jump on him rather than doing that zigzag thing we saw before thanks for watching mm -hmm.